Well, hello there. Today is, of course, Vlog 2 to me. It's basically the sequel to what I did on Thursday, the 21st of January of 2021. And can you believe it? I'm just so glad I'm doing a bit more vlogging activities at the moment now. So I'm just pretty glad that I'm doing it at the moment now. And I think it's going to be a little bit more better than the one on Thursday, the 21st, because it was pretty complex. But hopefully this one will be not so complex, because as I'm making this video, I've got headphones, just to keep myself comfortable, and occupied as well, preoccupied as well, maybe occupied is a much better word than occupied, but I'm not going to be doing any jump cuts because it's going to take the video far too long to produce, and also YouTube's videos, depending on how long or short they are, they tend to prefer like 2-3 to three minutes, even 5 minutes probably is like the maximum of how long the video should be lasting for, but this one's going to be long, and we're going to start off with our first with our product. It's of course the Chinese New Year 2021 product. It's the Oxidated Chinese Dragon 5 pack, or Chinese Dragons 5 pack, since it's got the letter S on it. £5.99 or £6, obviously. They've got heads like cows or oxes. And if I turn at the back of the packaging here, Oh my goodness, that looks like some sort of weird emo Chinese dragon. Just a generic looking design though. It's funny, I don't often tend to make dragons now these days because they look really that realistic though. Unless of course if it's like a lizard or a crocodile or... I don't know, maybe a snake or any other reptile like a turtle. Like all four reptiles. But anyways... Oh yeah, that gold one looks like it's got a sheep's head or a goat's head for that matter on the shape and design and um, yeah it doesn't look too bad there's some Chinese characters here obviously long as the Chinese people dragon and uh, these guys they all have chompy jaw actions which is pretty much interesting and um, we've got a derailment and it's one of the tiny power yeah, 500 cargo trains which I think it's gonna maybe take this video a long time to produce so what I do when I'm going to rerun trains, I'm just going to turn the model off, turn the train off, and then obviously that luggage is pretty much um, inhibiting its reliability to run better. But anyways, I've just moved the layout a bit better now, and um, I'm going to turn it on. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Didn't realise that wasn't good, eh? I'm not going to show you the, tra the train because it's going to take, you know, a fairly long time to produce this. But we'll see how it goes. And, um, hopefully this whole video won't be as bad as the other videos I've produced so, so, um, badly, Dave. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying here, but I'll turn it on. Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it today, but we're going to go ahead and unpack this, this product here, oh, I must have faced it upside down there, but I'm just going to unpack this, and I'll show you what I'm going to, oh my goodness me, these guys look pretty nice though, these guys could even rival us the dinosaurs though, that is freaking amazing, eh? Obviously they come in five different colours, this one here is a green and yellow one there. I actually took some inspiration from not just Chinese dragons, but also like the Typhoon Morangs from How to Train Your Dragon. If you remember, oh yes, whenever you look at that video back in um, November of 2019, it was actually quite nice, I have to say, eh? very, very nice. And um, obviously, before COVID was around, I've got to tell you what, um, I don't know what I'm saying here, but um, it's been quite long though, it's been like a fairly long time now, but um, I don't feel like 2019 is that nostalgic for me. It's so maybe a year I just sort of forget though, almost, because there were some great moments though. But anyways, there's... is that teal? I think it's a teal coloured Chinese dragon. It's quite a very interestingly coloured sort of dragon though. And we're still at winter, but spring is coming. It's nearly springtime, obviously, though, which is going to be the nicest thing to say here because we're starting to introduce a bit of warm weather from next week, though. 
And I don't know how warm it will get there because obviously from next week I don't think it's going to be as warm as 2019, which is of course two years ago. There's a gold dragon here with a white, is it belly or rump? I can't remember today. And if I give you a close up on these um, dragons here, they've got like a tongue, and they've also got like a, an eye there as well, though. Like a very nice looking yellow eye. Very, very nice. And I might show you the red one. Obviously, it looks very, very good too. Obviously, it has eye details like that. They have grey heads, but this one here's got like an orange underside. That's the word I'm looking for, eh? Underside. Okay, here's another one of these. It's a blue Chinese dragon with orange detailed patterns on it, eh? And if I show you the other side, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, I'll, I'll presume that the way that this model's been folded, I would obviously say that the horns on the dragon might obviously, if I take a bit of a closer look, look like this, sloping downwards, as what the packaging is meant to be like this. So that's what I'm thinking of, that packaging sort of design like that. It's pretty much the way it is. So, um, very, very nice. Oh, oh, and also it's got like yellowish greenish eyes here. Which is nice, obviously. Sorry, I just made a really funny noise there. And, um, looks like I'm grinding my teeth there because I had fish and chips today, though, which was very delicious today. Speaking of fish and chips, obviously, who knows? And speaking of who knows, do you know which animal loves fish and chips? Well, it's not dragons that much. Not just dragons, but there's one particular creature which is really amazing. So there you go, that's that product done, which is nice. I'm just going to put it down onto the ground or onto the floor because... Well, I've got a massive haul of Flip Flap Origami Seagull toys. And seagulls are of course, well, they're everywhere. And just to let you know, all of the seagull toys are based on the large, lowest species of gulls. Sadly, there are no black-headed ones at the moment, though. But you just have to wait at the moment, though. But anyways, we've got this one here first. Now, this product, this one here has been sitting there for months. I actually first created this toy back in November of 2020. It was on the late part of it when I was self-isolating, you know, just after Thanksgiving afternoon. I think it was around Thanksgiving afternoon where I had to self-isolate at home. But this product here is called the Pre-Breeding Herring Girl and Confrontational and Territorial 12-Pack. Pre-Breeding Confrontational Herring Girl and Territorial 12-Pack. Mine. Mine. There you go. Oh yes, a bit of anime style. Looks like someone's really, really livid because someone, one of the other seagulls, looks like they're arguing with each other on which territory is which. Look at that. Oh wow, that is a huge squabble of seagulls. Get it? Because whenever you think of seagulls, a group of them is called a squabble. Not just a flock, but a squabble. Because they're literally just doing what I would call like a row or an argumentative sort of display. Um, but these guys, obviously, what we all know about herring girls is that they're heavy keeled, heavy headed, and give a very heavy expression as well though. Because these guys are obviously bulky though. There you go, these are the herring girls that look pretty much angry though. They've got a very nice looking angry eye though. It looks like all of the seagulls have lost their tempo because it's the breeding season. Well, obviously, seagulls have to fight and to, you know, conquer in order to make, like, the best spot for which mate are there, like, the Tuesday. Also, whenever I think of seagulls, though, whenever I think of these ones there, the herring girls, um, the males actually tend to be a lot more larger, appearing a lot more larger in size than the female, even though they have got, like, these same sort of weights, even though the, the males are pretty much heavier and the females are lighter, these guys here, are obviously, uh, the male ones, they're actually a lot more heavier but also a bit larger than the females. This one is a bit wonky, especially those wing tips, eh? Funny looking 
with the tips out the way the wings have been designed and stuff like that, eh? Very nice indeed, eh? Very, very nice. There's no... They're just simply called Herring Girl, okay? So, there you go. There's all of them are named like that. There's no special attributes into them other than the fact that they're just called Herring Girls and they are pretty much like the regular Herring Girl 12 packs that we have but have more of a passive circular face rather than an angry looking face. Wow. Obviously, seagulls have the bigger... Yes, they have to... Not, they're not just bigger, but they have to bicker. <laughs> because that's what seagulls do. Obviously, they just... They just bicker for food, don't they, at the seaside. And, um... Yeah, they look really, really nice. Really, really nice. Especially with that silvery grey pale back. Which is pretty much the most archetypal feature of a herring girl for that matter. But I think there's other species that you could also apply to, like the Glaucus winged gull, um, the Iceland gull, but, you know, the Iceland, the Gaw oh, what's that one called? The Glaucus gull, which is like a great black bat gull and a herring gull mixed together. Um, these guys, they've got silvery grey bats, but they don't have, like, the black wing tips of a herring gull, which is pretty much interesting. Uh, this one here, I've actually found another error though. This one here is missing a black wing tip though, so I'm actually just going to colour this one in. Sorry, I just realised there's a mistake here, but, um, you know, people obviously make mistakes though. And, and oh, look at that! There's another mistake here! I forgot it! Oh, bummer. Bugger, I forgot to do this one, eh? I think I should have just said, oh, sugar. But, um, yes, um, it's quite amazing, the herring girls. And, um, yeah, very, very nice. And what's quite funny with seagulls is, particularly with the herring and the lesser blackbacks, they are scavengers. They are typical scavengers, or should I say revolting scavengers, because that's what they're meant to be. But they are pretty much almost the same size, or they're herring girls, as I can recall. They're slightly larger than the lesser blackbacks, although, I was saying that. Um, yeah, they're actually about the same size as a mallard. The same size as a mallard duck. And, um, yeah, I'm just saying things just to get myself on track specifically. Into what subject I'm actually talking about. There you go. Much better herring girl. There you go. The wingtips are coloured in nicely, I believe, though. Suppose it's time for me to move on to another product though because we've got 12 of these guys here and I just can't movie review these all the time. Look at the neck. And um, my goodness, I'm actually getting a lot of cigar thing toys here which is pretty not surprising indeed. What would you pick? Would you rather pick seagulls or fairies? Leave me in the comments down below though guys. Just please drop down some comments. Which one do you prefer, seagulls or fairies? <laughs> I would rather go for seagulls because we can travel together and find food opportunistically. Anyways, here's, speaking of herring girls, here's another product there. All of these toys are British Wild Affliction themed toys, and because we're in lockdown, I can't make any other seagull species like the kelp girl, the black tailed girl, uh, what's another girl species, the western girl. Yeah, anyways, this product here is called the Adult and Sub-Adult Herring Girl Mixed Flock 12 Pack. 19 pounds. <laughs> How I run okay because of COVID-19. There's the back of the packaging here. Frankly, if it's got that information here, it says those with dirty brown streaky heads are wintering birds with... Oh my goodness, what's that dark brown running? It says... Oh my goodness me, with brown wing markings. So it's like a combination of both. But um, I might be taking wrong, obviously. If they are so, I think it only applies to sub adult birds. Which is interesting to hear. There you go, into package. Oh goodness me. Anyways, I'm just going to flap this one here. Obviously, they've got like wonky beaks. How strange is that one, eh? But, um,. There you go, this one here is simply called Herring Girl, which is basically an adult Herring Girl, but yes, this one looks more passive than the angry ones we've taken a look at though. 
Jeez, that was a very realistic fine hope from that seagull, eh? The home girl. This one here, I think, it is a wintering sub-adult because not only for the fact it's got dirty brown streaks on the head, but it's also got like brown wing patterns there, which looks pretty much mucky and dirty looking in terms of the appearance and stuff like that one, hey? Just want to make sure that the trains are running nicely though, wintering sub-adult herring girl. But I'm thinking though that these guys are very nice. Okay, and what about this one here? That one there is another nice one, eh? Uh, obviously it's the same, but sometimes whenever I look at these models, the eye and the head pretty much are dependent there. Uh, let's take this one here. Another herring girl because... Oh wait! Oh, sorry. I thought it was a sub-adult, but yes, it's actually a herring girl. Of course, it's an adult one. And this one here is... It's a wintering adult. Because there's no brown streaking from the wings. Obviously, as we all know, there's the dark, dirty brown streaked heads. The dirty brown streaked head. I can just say there's only one. But if I'm, if I'm only going to bring like two of them, I'm checking that there's no brown streakings. There you go. There's two of them here. Nice indeed. Uh, they look quite good, I have to say, eh? quite funny, whenever I'm packing seagulls, uh, some of these guys, they've got like wonky wingtips. And uh, another thing about these guys is, is that whenever you think about seagulls, particularly with the large ones, they take like five years to develop into adult plumage. And five years is at their maximum of getting to the stage from juvenile, which is of course their brown colorization or sort of stage, but with white as this sort of colour, sorry my mouth has gone a bit funny that's why I'm looking at the sounds though, white is basically the colour for adult birds, or basically a transitional sort of colour if you're going from juvenile to adult. And obviously sub-adult is one word to describe them, of course, which is really interesting, right? This one here is a wintry one. Quite funny, we get a lot more wintering home girls inland rather than you know, the ones with clear white heads. And um, I think that only applies to adults, only pure adults. The ones that are like five or six years old old and over. This is pretty much interesting. And most importantly, as birds go older, and especially with seagulls though, these guys can have a pale iris, which obviously makes these guys a lot more mean of face and a lot more intimidating to look at though. Which is very nice indeed, eh? And if you're a gull expert, you can uh, obviously determine on how old the guys are, or the gulls are, sorry. <laughs> um, like, you know, um, how white the bird is, if it's like, if it's pure white, well, it's an adult bird, and if it's like a juvenile, it's a brown one. Of course, this one here, next product we're going to take a look at is £16.95. That's the price name I'm saying here, but this product is the Click Club Origami British Wildlife Collection. It, it's not a packing bird toy, it's called the Adult Swimming Herring Girl Flock 12 Pack. And um, there's the back of the packaging here. Looks like all of the seagulls are swimming though. Now compared to like waterfowl and all of the other birds that swim in the water, these guys, um, they can swim, but they're most likely airborne. So they're, they're most likely airborne at the time. They most likely fly in the sky a lot though, just to find food. But if they want to come to like a reservoir to roost though, they can swim in it, which is very nice though. If they want to roost in the water, they can just lay in there and just swim and just chill in the water like a jacuzzi or like a um like it's like a natural spa I mean, if i'm thinking about that one hey anyways i'm just going to unpack this and see what we have oh it's quite funny i don't often make toys like this you know swimming seagulls though this one here obviously you might be thinking oh they look like ducks but these are actually seagulls because of the colorization most of the beaks are a lot more slimmer than that of ducks, eh? 
They're, they are chunky, but they're not as chunky as ducks. Okay, so there's the other side here of this heron girl. All these are adult birds, though. And this is like the mute swan product, because if I look underneath on one of the models here, they all say the name heron girl. I've checked every single model, though, and yep, they all say the name... Yep, they all say the name Heron Girl, that's what I'm trying to say here. And obviously whenever I make models like this, sometimes the eye, the eyes themselves though, if I look at the eyes though, they can be pretty much different though in the way they've been designed and stuff like that one. Okay. Very, very good indeed, very, very good. And especially with this one here. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad in the way they've been designed. Obviously, I've just checked that there's 12 of them here, and all of them have names, so I'm not going to take a look at them further, eh? Which is very, very nice, stuff to say, eh? And, uh, most importantly, these guys have a very totally different beak design, which is very cool and eh? And, um, actually, I love the packaging itself, though. I love the sparkles on the packaging there. It makes it very, very, how do you say, vibrant, but also crisp in design. Makes it a bit fancy with that seagull sort of chilling and resting itself there while well, swimming with no water, I suppose, eh? But obviously there's no water here, but if you look at the bottom, there is water right where the licensing info is. Looks like UKTM PRC GBR 2021 copyright. I'm trying to be dramatic here just to get people's attention, so, but yeah, that's that product done. And um, actually, I might put these products down there. Actually, I forgot to put the one for confrontational having girls down, but I'm not going to put all of them down because what's going to cause is a derailment because we've got track master loop to continue with, eh? And um, hopefully, everything will go a bit fine here. Next product is this one here. This one we're going to be taking taking a look at some lesser black bat dolls. It is a flip flap origami flapping birds. I had a look at this product though before though. I don't see I don't think doll look what four pack. I think I have, yeah I think I had a look at this one before so I don't know if you've got products to view eh but um yeah it's actually pretty nice eh okay so the flip flap origami flapping birds put in while of collection uh feeding and Fishing add-on and sub add-on lesser black back dolls flock 12 pack. Uh, it looks very, very nice. £14.99 or £15. There's the back of the packaging here. Feels like Flip Flap is starting to run out a bit of ideas when it comes to the seagulls. Which is uh, quite strange here. Sorry, I need to trim my moustache after I'm making the video there because I feel pretty hideous when I got a bit of a moustache. I'm not really keen on that because I feel better when I'm young. Young looking, obviously, though. Not with the moustache in it, though. But anyways, I'm just going to unpack this and see what we have. And there's a slight error here on the art of day. There's like four cards, but this product actually contains three. Which is quite strange. If I show you the packaging artwork here, there's actually three of them here. There's actually four, which is quite strange, though. But what you get is four. Oh my, oh my god. I was about to say the word koi carp, but these are actually cod. And if I get a bit of a closer up, so I, I might show you one individual there because it can be very difficult to show you what it looks like there. And um, obviously the face, whenever I'm holding little tiny things there, they look quite distorted there. Not very clear to see. There's the other side here. Okay, so there's the other one there. I feel like I'm grinding my teeth now because I'm feeling quite hungry at the moment today. But um, dinner is coming, which will save me from from craving myself on food and stuff like that, you know. And um, yeah, it feels like I'm getting too much. Oh wow, that is a very nicely uh, shown close-up of this. Card? No, sorry, card. Yes, yeah, sorry. I thought I was about to say the word card or koi, but um, card is the much better way to describe these fishes there, which is pretty much interesting. 
Uh, next, I'm just going to show you some crabs. Just very simplistic crabs, so nothing much going on here. Obviously, the artwork is pretty much nice, though, but um, the underside, there's no yellow in it, so what can you say? Not much going on here. I feel like the world's about to end, guys, you know, but um, who knows? Maybe the world will go back to normal soon, you have to say, eh? Also, um, well, the world's not looking as great as what we had recently, but, um, yep, time just flies by, you know. Time just would, in fact, fly by. I'm just going to put the crabs away, and the fishies away, and now I'm going to take a look at the lesser black bat girls. Now, what we all know about these guys is that they're basically the same size as a herring girl. Although, onto people's eyes, they actually look a lot more slightly more elegant and less bulky. And obviously, contrasting with herring girl, the, the backs themselves, obviously the wings and the back, are like a darker, slightish grey, which is the most recognisable thing whenever I think of these guys. Although, some of the more dark and more eastern races in Europe they're pretty much interestingly different because, like, you know, some of the different subspecies of the lesser black bat girl tend to have, like, darker, if not blacker, sort of, hence named wing colorizations in terms of their design and stuff like that one, eh, which is very, very nice. And, um, yeah, it looks very, very nice. And whenever I think about these guys, they're actually a lot more, a lot more marine looking there than a herring girl because whenever I think of these guys they're more of a strictly um, more of a strict marine bird they're strictly marine looking there because they breed in colonies although I could say otherwise because herring girls can breed in colonies and both of these species can actually hybridize together there which is pretty much nice there and I might show you if I show you the sub-adult one Oh, the wings are going to be wonky in this one, you know. It's got a brown tail end, but what's also very nicely important is that if I show you the wings here, they have like a slightish grey with dark brown in it, which is very, very nice to hear. Also, the face is going to be um, sooted. Looks quite sooty, that face. Looks like um, they must have seen far much better days from the pencil lid, but nevertheless, it's quite a nice product. What can you say? pretty much interesting I believe though and um, yeah it's quite nice and I've got a funny feeling the fewer the products the, the faster the video okay which is very, very nice uh, I've changed my mind I'm just gonna put it right there because I don't want Luke to be vile and next product though we're gonna take a look at is speaking of lesser blackback girls we've got this one here which is the pre southern far or autumn journey departure and winter feeding Oh, sorry, water feeding discordant 12 pack. Discordant 12 pack. Sometimes I just struggle with words, you know. Maybe I do have to select you, though. But, anyways, this product here costs about £15.99. I thought it was naughty at first glance because of the way it's being drawn. Like, you know, if it was like shown like this or that, but clearly it says 99 £14. Once again, we've got the coronavirus on the top left with a picture of a, uh, a mullet. Almost thought, I don't know, I actually thought it was a mackerel, but there's the back of the packaging here. Ooh, we've got some good stuff like that. See you guys here. Oh, look at that adult ear. Looks like this one here is, might be thinking, oh, I hate my life though. I'm going to die though because this brown bugger here is just, he's just crying with tears of joy though. He wants more food. He's such a greedy. I'm not going to say anything inappropriate there, such a, I would say more like a gr greedy lunatic. I won't say the B word, which ends with the D, because that's going to trigger off YouTube these days. So. But anyways, obviously, there are four fish, one crab, and one fly. But it's not a real fly, but a fake one. And it's based on a house fly. Six flapping birds, which is nice to see. I hear that all night. And also, whenever I think of lesser blackback girls, they tend to be a lot more darker than that of the um, the herring girls. Not just the adults, but also the juveniles themselves. They have got more of like a um. I almost thought I'm just going to review more products, but um, I'm actually 
sort of finish up all of that, so this is pretty much interesting. But anyways, we've got like a a little uh, house fly, which looks nothing like a house fly. Just a very weird cartoony design of a fly. Okay, with those red eyes, uh, just looking at and just staring at. Oh, it just flew like a fly, you know, just flew down like an actual fly, but not. But anyways, here's the crab. And what's more better than the crabs that we've looked at in the other products? Look at this. Much better detailing. I mean, if anything, if this was done on the other product, it would have made them a lot much more... How would you say that? It would have made them a lot more accurate to what you would actually expect to see a real crab at the beach day. Also, oh, pun of me, sorry, this birthday. In this country, it's actually illegal to fish a crab which is under about 100 millimeters or 100 centimeters. I can't remember though. 100 millimeters. Under 100 millimeters uh, for a crab. Uh, it's some sort of conservation measure, law, um, regulation thing in the UK that they have in their shores. But it's quite a nice model though, actually. And uh, here are the fishies there. They're, I think they're called mullets. I mean, they look like sardines or mackerel though, but um, they're like a very totally different fish though. Totally different compared to what I would, I would normally design fish like that, eh? And uh, if I give you a bit of a closer up, like so, and it looks nothing too bad about this. Um, uh, I wonder how bland it is. I don't think it's that bland, but um, yeah, it's not too bad actually, eh? Same with this one here. Okay. Ooh, that's a very nice person, eh? Lovely smile in that design, eh? And also, I love that very cool design and pattern on that thing. Fish, I'm just going to show you the fly again because obviously the fly looks um, pretty lavishly detailed. Once again, we've got the lesser flatback girls, which, you know, they've got like the same detailings here, same with these. Eyes there. It's quite funny, whenever I'm looking at these guys there, they've got like smaller eyes there. Because in the past, I used to remember that these guys used to have larger eyes. But because of the fact that I wanted to make these guys a little bit more realistic, what I did was I... Oh my goodness me, this one's gone a bit wet though. It used to be quite wet though. But um, um, with lots of black back girls, I actually doubled the, the colour of the back to give it a lot more realism onto these guys. It's pretty aesthetic when if I think about these designs though. But um, yeah, they look really, really nice. And uh, obviously, these guys just have large um, eyes, uh, large bulging eyes at you though. But um, yeah, nowadays they just stick to realism, which is pretty much interesting when if I think of them, of course I. But um, yeah, there's like, it's not too bad. There's four adults, and there's two juveniles here. Which obviously speculates that, yes, there's one pair sort of like formulating together there. They're sort of court shipping, but it's late now because it's August or September. They have to fly southwards. But this is like the part though, whenever I think of lesser blackback girls in August and September, they keep the white heads up until like, like the early or the mid or the late part of September. I, I don't know which part of September, but. Otherwise, yeah, I would say otherwise, at any time, I believe so. But, uh, yep, that's this product done. And, um, yes, it looks quite nice actually. There are a whole bunch of sea life there and stuff like that, you know. Goodness me, anyway, Feels like technology has been taking over these days, especially, yeah. Actually, I've been using TikTok a lot there, which is pretty much insane now eh? because TikTok is certainly not the app I would really use but I'm starting to get into it a lot more because I'm getting really addicted to it. <laughs> but anyways, last but not least, sub adult herring girl! Um, fishing feeding frenzy with different aquatic prey, 12 pack, 14 pounds, 99 or 15 pounds. There's the back of the packaging here, and what's very nice about this product is that it also comes with a couple of scallops. Not just fish, which are based on sardines, and a couple of starfish based on common starfish, you also get two scallops. It's pretty much interesting, and if I think of scallops, they're pretty much common though, 
but I actually don't eat them that much today. I, I actually tried these guys before though, but I actually don't eat them a lot though, because I have huge concerns of me getting eczema from them. You know, or dermatitis. That's the other word for eczema. But anyways, here are two clams. There's a yellow one and a purple one. And um, looks very, very nicely detailed. Once again, much better um, detailed than the other scallops I did in the other videos and stuff like, like that one. Eh? Here are two sardines, which look like wishy-washy. Pretty much interesting in the way they've been designed. Uh, looks a bit anime looking with those bulging eyes once again there. Eh? And uh, here's the other sardine there. Eh? And uh, obviously, whenever I think of sardine, uh, they're like small fry fishies there. Eh? Small fishies, obviously eh? they. They're, they're like sand eels there, eh? but um, they're much bigger there. Eh? Anyways, let's take a look at the herring gulls. This one here is a sub adult, I think. Also, I also had a look at the map there, and what also got me quite curious was that when I had a look at these seagulls, so the herring gulls, they're actually absent, and they're actually more of a rare visitor in Eastern Europe, which is pretty much interesting though. I thought these guys would have spread it all the way towards like Eastern Europe, but these guys, the European herring gulls, actually um, occur from like, you know, Iceland all the way to the UK, which is of course the country I often see a lot of these guys around. Scandinavia, Western Europe, um, Northern Germany, especially at the coast, like Heligoland, which is like an island in Germany, where there's like loads and loads of seagulls and other birds breeding here, which is nice to see. Um, Poland also has a, a high concentration of, of these guys, and so is Russia, okay? But, but with places like, you know, Eastern Europe, such as like Romania and Bulgaria, these guys, they're actually a lot more rarer. And what's quite funny about these guys is that you might be able to see one of these. I think um, there was a herring gull. I actually had a look at the eBird map, and I actually noticed there was a picture of a herring gull photographed in somewhere in a river, which is called a Danube in Eastern Europe. And these guys are extremely rare. They're actually accidental yet extremely rare looking birds today. They must have been flown off to somewhere else, I don't know, but, um, don't really know her. No, I do not really know her, but, um, yeah, pretty much nice, though. Just heard some background noises, though, but, um, anyways, I think that's about it, though, in this video, though, so hopefully this vlog wasn't that too long, though, which was very nice to hear, though, because, obviously, if this vlog was, like, you know, 40 minutes long, well, the video would have been a complete and utter piece of shambles. Try not to be vulgar here, but anyways, if you really enjoyed this video, please give this video a like, subscribe for more Cup content on my YouTube channel, as I am still pretty much new there, I can't believe that my YouTube channel is, my goodness, like two years old now, so I'm starting to feel like I'm getting the hang over it now. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye for now. Oh my goodness me. Don't you love vlogs, don't you? Eh? I do.